Okay, um, just a little bit about myself. Uh, I work for a company called uh, CMC Markets. Um, and again, the same sort of risk warning that uh, David just went through there. Um, I firstly just want to talk a little bit about the company that I work for. Uh, we're established back in 1989, so we're actually celebrating our 25th year um, in the marketplace at the moment. We have head offices here in London, uh, but we are we do have 11 offices located around the globe um, over four continents. Uh, we developed the world's first online foreign exchange transaction. So one of the big elements of our business is about online trading. Uh, we realised back in 1996 that investing online was going to be the way that clients wanted to trade. It was the ease of use, and we actually went on and built uh, a program called Market Maker. But back in 2010, we actually released our new next generation trading platform. And I'll show you a little bit about that as we go through the presentation. Um, and last year, uh, we won the Financial Provider of the Year by Shares Magazine. So the producers of this show um, and the voters actually awarded us that, uh, that quite prestigious award. So there's just a little bit about uh, the business that I work for. But I actually head up the product development um, part of CMC Markets. So we, I, we go ahead and we build the features that go on the platform. And we get all of that information from our client base. But the two products that we mainly trade in are, are called CFDs and spread betting. Now, I'm not sure if anyone's trading spread betting or CFDs at the moment. Anyone? There they go, one or two. Fantastic. Well, if you are trading physical shares at the moment, then you can consider alternative investment options. And spread betting is certainly one of those. If you're lucky enough to live here in the UK, uh, you have the advantage of this type of product. Now, with physical share trading, um, you're used to profiting from just a rising market. Uh, with spread betting, you have the ability to profit from both a falling and a rising market as well, which gives you great opportunity uh, during certain volatile periods of the market, uh, which we have seen, especially over the last week, and I'll talk about that uh, with the no vote uh, in Scotland, or no yes vote in Scotland. There's minimum trade sizes with physical share trading. Uh, when you're trading spread betting, there are no minimum trade sizes. There's a, a very small one pound a point uh, type of uh, a trade that you can place. But what I really want to cover today and the, and the, and the benefits is more around the, the, the tax advantages. And there are a number of them. The first one, uh, if you've been trading physical shares, uh, there is that annoying 0.5% stamp duty uh, tax that you need to, uh, to pay on any investments that you take out. Now, those sums can actually add up to quite a considerable amount of money. Uh, if you're investing in the long term, yes, that's, it's not so bad. It's a, it's a small um, sort of a fee. But if you're trading short term, these fees can add up to, to quite a considerable amount. With spread betting, uh, because you don't actually own the physical underlying stock, okay, you're actually taking a position um, based off or derived from the underlying instrument you don't have to pay that stamp duty. So me immediately you're saving yourself 0.5% of any trade that you place. The second one is around capital gains tax. So with physical share trading, uh, once you've got through your, your capital gains tax threshold, you'll pay an 18% or up to 28% capital gains tax on, on the, uh, the earnings that you make on your, on your share portfolio. When you're trading spread betting, there is no capital gains tax that applies. So you can hold the position um, and get out of that position knowing full well that there's no extra tax that you need to place or pay on those particular investments. So there's two very big components of spread betting that help you with physical compared to physical share trading. The second one, uh, or the lower one there, is that lower position margins. So with physical share trading, you need to put up the complete amount of the trade to take out that position. So if you're taking out to a, a trade on, let's say, RBS, you'd need to, let's say, £20,000. With spread betting, you only pay a, a percentage margin of that. So with our top stocks on the UK market, you're looking at around about 3% margin. So a small amount of uh, capital to take out the same amount of investment uh, in the underlying. And I'll go through an example with you uh, in the next couple of slides. Because you are trading on margin, though, there is a uh, the holding cost to, uh, to apply. So if you hold your position overnight, then there will be uh, a holding cost uh, because you're, in essence, borrowing those funds uh, from the provider to take out that trade. But I'll, ta I'll talk you through all the examples in a second. And one of the last ones there, with spread betting accounts, you have access to global markets. Okay, So you've got access to the UK market, European markets, US markets. There's over 20 different markets that you can trade with CMC markets. But it's not just shares that you can trade. 
You can trade indices, you can trade foreign exchange, you can trade commodities, you can trade treasuries, all from one single account. Okay, so there's a lot of power with these types of, uh, these types of accounts. Okay, so I think the easiest way to walk you through some of the tax advantages of the, these types of accounts is to give you an example against a physical share trade versus a spread bet position. So you can completely understand where the, where the advantages are uh, with this type of trade. So we're going to show you an example here of Vodafone. Uh, Vodafone, when I did this example a week ago, was up at 209. It's down at 202 at the moment. Uh, but let's say we've got the bid uh, 209 and the offer at 210. Now, with your position size, if you're going to take out a 10,000 shares, uh, it's the equivalent of 100 pounds per point. Now, one pound per point is equal to 100 shares. It really is that simple an equation to sort of figure out. So if you feel a little bit uncomfortable with the terminology of, of trading on a pounds per point basis, one pound per point is the equivalent of 100 shares. So here we have, on the left hand side, we have your physical share trading. And on the right hand side, you have a, a spread bet trade. Now, when we buy price of 210, times of that by the 10,000 shares that you want to buy, you're looking at an initial outlay uh, of 21,000. That's going to be your investment size. You've got commission charges, um, and you also have that dreaded stamp duty of 0.5%. So on a 21,000 pound trade, you're looking at stamp duty of 105 pounds. Your total outlay then for this trade is 21,117 pounds and 50p. When you compare that with the spread betting side, you can see there that the buy price is slightly higher and the reason for that is that we actually inbuild the, the commission, or what we call the spread, uh, into the price. So here you're looking at 210 uh, spot 21. Your initial outlay, though, is only 3%. So instead of having to put up that 21,000 that you would with the physical shares, you only need to deposit 630 pounds to take out the same exposure of 21,000 pounds that you would have with your physical share trades. Okay? So a very small initial layer um, payment uh, to take out the same size. Stamp duty is nil. Okay? So your total outlay on this trade is only £630.51. Okay, quite a difference compared to the physical share trading. Now, let's say the share price rises to 220 okay, the next day wishful thinking, but let's say just for this example to, to give you a good breadth of uh, the sort of figures we're talking about. So at the sell price of 220, uh, your gross profit on the physical share trading is 1,000 pounds. Your gross profit on the spread betting trade is 965 pounds. And the, re the, the, the 35 pounds difference is because of the inbuilt spread, which is the, the sort of commission that gets charged. Financing costs with physical shares, well, that is zero. Okay, you're putting in the full amount of your own money to take out that position. But with spread betting, you are effectively borrowing those funds to take out this trade. So there's a small financing cost at the end of each day. Now, at the moment, you're looking at uh, LIBORs roughly around about the 0.5%. Okay, we add on a 2.5% buffer. So it's around about 3% per annum that is charged on uh, the, the position size. Now for this one night, you're looking at £1.73. Your total commission charges, well, that's actually built into the spread, which we talked about before. So my net profit on the spread betting trade is £963.27. Compare that with the exact same trade with physical trading, and you're looking at £870. If you've reached your tax-free threshold, then again, you need to pay that additional 18% capital gains tax. So you can actually bring that down to £754 on the physical share trade compared to the spread bet example where there's no capital gains tax applied, so you get to keep the £963 on that trade. So that's a winning trade, but if we were to have a look at a losing trade, the same sort of principle applies. Um, the share price falls, let's say, the next day to 205 We decide to sell. Your gross loss on the physical share trade is 500 pounds. You include your commission charges, you include the stamp duty, you're looking at a net loss of 630 pounds. On the spread bet side, your gross loss is 533. 
you've still got to incur that holding cost charge. Total commission charges in the, in the spread, again the stamp duty is nil. So your net loss is £534. So hopefully you start to realise with regards to the spread bet trades um, that that stamp duty component okay, can add up quite significantly. Now, I'm not saying that physical share trading uh, and spread betting trading um, work hand in hand. I, basically, with spread betting trading, if you're looking at shorter term positions, okay, um, then spread betting trading is, is really an alternative option that you should be looking at compared to just physical share trading. The minute you decide to hold the, the, the position longer, you need to factor in the financing charges that are applied on that account. So the financing will build up over time, um, and then that will start to outweigh the advantages of the no stamp duty. Though if you are above your tax-free threshold, okay, remember that tax-free threshold of 18%, then again, holding a spread bet position for even longer is still beneficial compared to that, that physical share trade. So hopefully that gives you a bit of an, an, an idea of how you can save on short-term trading. The real advantage of these types of products um, has a lot to do with short-term hedging as well. If you've got physical shares, uh, you don't want to get rid of those physical share uh, portfolio. Uh, you, don't, you don't want to incur a capital gains. You, what, you actually think that stock's doing well uh, and you don't want to pay additional stamp duty to get back into that position after that period of uncertainty. Spread betting is a really great way to hedge against short-term volatility in the marketplace, against your physical shares. Um, the perfect example at the moment, um, and I was talking that, about that with a few of the colleagues earlier, was the no vote and yes vote uh, that's occurring at the moment. Now, I hold Lloyd shares, and there is a lot of uncertainty around the banking industry in Scotland. You've got uh, RBS and Lloyds that are based in Scotland at the moment, or they've got their head offices in London. And that obviously worries investors. It sort of says, well, you know, what's going to happen uh, if a yes vote for independence occurs? So what we saw on Monday, once the opinion polls came out and the yes vote was ahead, uh, we saw RBS and Lloyd shares drop dramatically on that day. Now, if you're holding it as a long-term position, you still think it's a great opportunity, but in the short term, you think, well, because of this volatility, there could be some short-term um, decrease in the share price. What you could do, and this is where spread betting the ability to go short, and what that means is that you can profit from a falling market. So you can sell the spread bet and then buy it back later, okay, to make a profit. So you'd have your physical shares. Let's say you've got 20,000 um, Lloyd shares. You then do a 200 pounds per point short trade on the spread bet side. And what we call that is, that means that you're hedging your position. Um, if the price does indeed fall, you profit from the spread bet trade while making a loss on your physical shares. If the price goes up, you make a loss on the spread bet trade, but you make on the physical shares. So effectively, your position is therefore reduced to zero. So you don't have exposure necessarily to the market during that period of uncertainty, um, which you know, can be a great advantage. Now, hedging is a gr uh, spread betting is a great tool for hedging. Um, and hopefully when I show you the, uh, the platform in a second, we can show you some of the order tickets uh, and some of the features that you can use on the order tickets to, to sort of set up trades for you. Okay, I'm just going to bring up the platform. Okay, so this is the uh, next generation trading platform from CMC Markets. Um, this, because I head up product development, a lot of the features that are built onto the platform uh, are features that over the years, we, you know, you've got your traditional charting and all those other elements. Um, but we've built in a number of other enhanced features such as client sentiment, uh, pattern recognition tools. So if you're a trader, uh, a technical analyst, and you're into charting, uh, there's a number of advantages with uh, the, the charting package. Uh, you've got customize, customizable Reuters news. Um, you've got a whole range of tools that are at your uh, disposal through the platform. But I'll bring up the product library. Okay, so again, you've got the commodities, you've got currencies, you've got indices, uh, shares, and you've got treasuries. Now, if you're a physical share trader at the moment, um, 
it can be quite difficult in certain elements to actually go and trade international shares. Uh, so if you wanted to trade US stocks, for example, you need to register, um, send in your forms. When you're trading through spread betting, because you're not actually physically owning the underlying instrument, you don't need to fill in any of those sorts of things. You get access to all of these markets by simply opening up an account. So you can trade Canada, Canadian stocks, Hong Kong, Ireland, Japan, um, most of the European stocks. You've got the UK um, and you've got the US markets as well. Um, but one of the more popular elements uh, of the platform and one of the most traded products that we have uh, at CMC, what we start to see is people are used to physical share trades and they love that sort of security, they understand physical shares, but when they open up the accounts, they start with those types of uh, products, but they move on to the things like indices. Indices are uh, one of our most popular products that are traded on the, uh, on the, on the platform, and indices are a, a sort of a diversified way of getting access to the market. We all have a, a general feel as to what the market conditions are like. We think the market's going to go up, uh, you know, we think the markets might go down, but we're not necessarily sure of which instruments are going to go up and down. So, you know, I think Lloyd's may go up, may go down, but I have a, f a fairly general impression that the UK market is doing well. All the announcements, all the economic figures that are coming out are all very positive, and I feel that, you know, there's, there's some strength in it. So what clients can do is trade the index. Um, so you've got here the UK 100, uh, you've got the Dow Jones, you've got the NASDAQ, uh, you've got the, the, the S&P 500, um, You've got the Germany 30, so you've got the DAX, the CACs. Uh, so you've got access to all of these, and they are a diversified way of getting access to the market. You know, they really are a, a great product to have a look at. And one of the other elements of trading international shares is that you're trading um, in the local currency. So if you're trading physical shares in the US, you're trading in US dollars. If there's currency um, exposure, if your profits then have some sort of currency exposure risk to it. So if the US dollar goes down or the US dollar goes up, that will increase or decrease the value of your investments. With spread bet trading, everything is in pounds. So any investment that you take out is always in pounds. So what that means is that there is no currency risk associated with those trades. Okay. It's always in pounds. You don't have to worry about whether or not the US dollar is going up or down uh, if you have any international shares. And the most popular products we have are like Apple, Facebook, Twitter. And they're all American stocks. Um, and they are very popular on the platform. Um, we've got Alibaba that's coming on the market uh, soon as well. And you'll be able to trade that on the platform as well. So you start to see all these news stories about these products, IPOs, everything. They are all available to the, on the platform to trade uh, very, very easily. So I've got a, uh, a watch list up here at the moment. And again, if you want a demonstration of the platform, we have a stand that's just outside the door there on the left-hand side. We can give you one-on-one -on -one demonstration of any of the features that are, that are on the platform. But I've got a uh, watch list here of all my favourite sort of equities uh, that I like to have a look at on a regular basis. You've got Lloyd's, Vodafone, Royal Bank of Scotland, um, Lloyd's have always been interested in uh, to, it, the banking sector in the UK. Uh, you know, makes up a lot of what happens in the UK economy. Um, and then you've got all the, the supermarkets, Tesco, Sainsbury's, and then even down the bottom, we've got a lot of those apples, Twitter, Facebook, um, etc. Now, if I wanted to trade any of these, I simply click on the buy if I think the market's going to go up in value, or I click on the sell if I think the market is going to go down in value. So if I bring up a ticket, You can see here, uh, we've got the, the current bid and offer price. Um, you then enter in a number of pounds per point. So if we were doing that example before, 200 pounds per point um, on Lloyd's is the equivalent of around about 14,655 uh, pounds worth of uh, position. Now, we have three different types of order types that you can use. You can use a market order to get into the market at the current market price. You've also got limit and stop entry orders that will sit in the market waiting for the price to reach a certain level before they execute. So if you want to get in at a price that's it's currently lower than the current market price, simply enter in a limit order. If you're a technical analyst and you're looking at the charting and you're saying, well, if it breaks above this particular price, I think it will continue to go up then you can put in a stop entry to enter in at a price above the current market price. 
You've also got access to stop loss uh, and take profit orders. These are orders that will automatically get you out of the trade um, at predetermined levels of profit or loss attached to the trade. Um, and you can either do that in amounts, points, um, etc. So there's the order ticket. Uh, you have a complete flexibility. You've even got uh, access to trailing stop losses. Uh, trailing stop losses are quite popular once you're actually in a prof profitable position. So you've reached a profit level, you put on a trailing stop loss. Uh, what that does is it will trail behind any profitable movement. And then as the market comes down, it will get you out at a higher price. So there's a lot of order execution and risk management tools that you can use directly via the platform. But not only with the order ticket, you've got access to a whole range of uh, useful um, sort of tools uh, at your disposal. So you've got advanced charts. Now, unlike a lot of physical share trading accounts um, that offer very simplistic charting packages, uh, with spread betting accounts and especially with the CMC next gen platform, you have uh, some very advanced charting um, functionality. You've got access to over 80 different technical indicators uh, like RSI, MACD, simple moving averages. If you don't know what they are, we have full uh, inbuilt education in the platform for you so we can detail exactly what they are used for. Um, you've got drawing tools, you've got pattern recognition. So pattern recognition, basically, if you're not a technical analyst yourself and you don't know where to put trend lines or support and resistance lines, the platform will automatically identify those for you. So it'll look for them, it'll create them. So here what we put on is triangle formations and you can see here, um, there was a triangle, the, the price was getting tighter and tighter, it was finding some sort of happy equilibrium, something happened, a shock in the market happened, it fell. Uh, once it broke out of that pattern, um, we have price projection box. So you can see an orange area there on the screen. It's actually giving you a, a price projection range as to where the market could go uh, if it breaks out of that pattern. So there's some, some quite advanced tools that are, that are available within the, uh, within the platform. One of the really popular um, new features that we've added uh, recently is um, client sentiment. Now, client sentiment is a tool. We all like to understand what other traders are doing in the marketplace. Uh, I'm always interested in knowing, well, what's everyone else thinking on a particular stock? What this tool does is it actually tells you how many of our clients are currently long versus short that particular instrument. So here with the UK 100, which is the UK index, um, generally our client base at the moment is short. They think that the market's a little bit high at the moment and they think the market might potentially fall. It's fairly even, it's around about the 52%, 56%. So we're looking roughly that, you know, everyone's a little bit uncertain. And I think that's fair enough at the moment with all the, the sort of um, impact that a no vote uh, and a yes vote might cause the UK economy. Everyone's a little bit uncertain. There's some people that say, well, actually the, the no vote's going to get up, so I'm happy to keep uh, long positions. Uh, but then there might be others that think the yes vote will get up and that that might hurt the, uh, the actual economy at the moment. So we're looking at around about 50-50. We have built in here uh, two different features. You can have all clients. So that's all of the 33,000 odd clients that CMC has trading on a monthly basis. And 44% of them have bought, 56% of them have sold. But we also have access to just our top clients. And what I mean by top clients is those clients that are profitable on their trading positions over the last three months. So if they are profitable traders, we'll give you access to what positions they are currently, whether or not they're long or short, uh, any, any particular position. Now, the left-hand side is the number of clients. The right-hand side is the position value. So it's all for well knowing, let's say we've got 1,000 clients, 40, 480 of them uh, have bought, 520 of them have sold. But how much money has each of those put into the position? Well, if we had uh, £100,000 currently invested in, in, in the UK 100, it would be way more than that, but just as a, a nice round figure, £410,000 of that is in the long position, and £590,000 is in the short position. So effectively, we're starting to see a bias towards the short side. Okay? So these tools, they help back up what other people are thinking compared to your own thinking. So, you know, they're quite useful. They're updated in real time. So basically every minute uh, we will update uh, these feeds and we will show you in real time what 
other clients are doing on the platform. A really useful tool. Um, you can see it on all the different other products um, that we offer throughout the platform. You've got access here uh, to Reuters News. Um, so again, you know, complete range of Reuters News. Now, this is Reuters News that is just specific to Lloyd's Banking. Um, but you also have up the, here in the, um, in the Market Pulse section, you've got General Market News. And the other sort of news that you can do is fully customizable against products that you're interested in. So if you're only interested in news that is applicable to stocks that you have in your account, well, we've filtered that down for you and you can have Reuters News that is just attributable to your stocks your watch list and you can set up as many different watch lists as you like um, and you can have access to all of these different feeds uh, directly from, uh, from uh, the Reuters feed. Um, one of the big tools that we've recently introduced as well is uh, if you're a chartist um, and a lot of, um, I know David Jones is doing a presentation later on this afternoon on charts so it's definitely worth having a look and seeing if you can attend that session. Um, charts is certainly something that I use a lot when I come to trading. Um, you know, there's certain things that you know you're looking for. Um, you're looking for patterns uh, in historical chart action, um, and whether or not you can exploit those patterns uh, to make a profit. So when I was talking about the triangle formation before, this is a very common pattern that occurs in price action. What it does is the market makes a big move, it comes back. It starts to stabilise around a certain price and it needs some sort of reaction or some sort of news in the market for it to break out either side. So here, when we see a breakout occur, that's where, you know, potentially there is a greater element of the market moving in a certain direction and we might be able to get on board with that particular trade. So charts can really help you define an entry point into the market. Too often we see traders actually get into the market, you know, they say, okay, well, I think it's undervalued, I'm just going to get in now. There are ways that you can measure with support and resistance lines uh, and you, your traditional patterns to time your trades better into the marketplace. Um, so one of the tools we've used is if you're not a chartist yourself, um, we have this new tool called the Chart Forum. Now the Chart Forum uh, basically allows us to get our analysts, our internal analysts, so we've got our global team of analysts in Australia, Canada, uh, Asia, in, in through Europe, and what they'll do is they will get onto the charts of the day, uh, they'll probably do six or seven updates a day, look at underlying price action and draw in um, certain key levels that they think you should be looking at. So here, Michael Hewson, our chief market analyst in the UK. Uh, you might have seen um, Michael, he, he regularly presents on, on the news channels. He will come on, he'll look at the charts, and he will highlight here, you can see with the US 30, that 17,150 is a very key level that's applicable on that US index. Um, so you can see currently holding above the 17,000 level, but if we do push below, we could see further losses towards the 16,700. So he's drawn in that analysis there for you. Now this isn't a static image. This is actually, if I click on this keep analysis down the bottom, this has now been transported onto my chart. So this is your analysis on your chart that you can do with whatever you like. So I can actually move that analysis around, etc. So you know, if, you, if you're new to charting, uh, it's definitely a very um, interesting sort of tool that you can use to sort of get a, a bit of more flavour about how to use these types of tools. And again, they provide a little bit of a comment um, on the right hand side. And if you are interested in learning more about it, you can actually comment yourself and ask questions to Michael directly through the platform. And he answers all of them. So anyone that replies um, you know, to that, those comments, uh, he'll get back to you and sort of give you any sort of feedback on your charts. So if you post a chart on the forum, you can do it as well. It's not just our analysts. Um, you know, we can give you a little bit of help as to, to, to define other key levels that you might or should be looking at um, in the platform. So again, quite an interesting tool to have a look at. Um, the other element uh, you've also got, you've got economic calendar. So um, this is really important. I think one of the things that a lot of clients don't use is, is understanding when the markets, because it's Sunday or Saturday, it's not going to have anything in it. <laughs> so let me, okay, and I've only got it on Japan at the moment. Uh, so let me just add the US and 
UK. So you can get major economic announcements for, from around the globe directly imported into the platform for you. And we give you actual forecast. It's a bit hard to read at the moment, so I do apologise. Um, so you can see like the monthly house price index, New York Fed, Empire State Survey, industrial production, all of these sorts of announcements affect the underlying price action. So non-farm payrolls, uh, you've probably all heard of non-farm payrolls at some point or another. Uh, that comes out on the first Friday of every month. Um, that is a really key announcement that can move all the markets. Okay, So they're not just the index markets or the FX markets. They will obviously have an impact on physical share trading as well. So when clients are thinking of buying even physical shares, you should really be aware of all the different types of announcements that are coming out. And the economic calendar does that for you. It does it all for you in one uh, simple uh, sort of table view. Uh, we also have inbuilt alerts. So we will actually tell you, and we can send this to your mobile device as well, push out notifications to your, your mobile saying that uh, you know the house price is due in 10 minutes, it can affect the price. So again, certainly something that you should be aware of whenever deciding to purchase any sort of stocks or shares on the marketplace. Um, the last thing I want to show is just um, the sort of pattern recognition. Um, not only do we have pattern recognition built into uh, the charts themselves, but we also have pattern recognition built into um, a scanner. And what that does is it scans 120 of our most popular products, uh, FX, shares, index, um, all the products that you can be interested in, and it will tell you whether or not a pattern is emerging. So is it still within the pattern that we've created, or is it uh, you know, just recently completed? So if I look at this, uh, let's say I look at the US SPX, uh, bring up a chart. You can see here it's created a pattern for you. Um, so you're looking at a descending channel formation. It's recently broken out of that pattern and we've got a price projection box there um, that can help you determine roughly where, from a technical perspective, um, where the price action could potentially go. So we've broken it into three sections. You've got the, the top third, the middle third and the lower third. And the reason we do that is because we want you to be able to back test the historical success of this type of pattern in the past. So if we go back and have a look at uh, the US XPX, and there's an icon just here, so the screen's quite small, so click on this icon here, and this goes back and back tests all of that information. Let me just. And tells us the success rate of that particular pattern. So out of the last 27 patterns that have occurred on this type of pattern, on this instrument, over this interval, 29% of those patterns have gone into the high area, 22% into the midsection, and 22% into the lower section. So nearly 75% of all of these patterns have gone into where the price projection range is. Okay? So it allows you to say, well, historically, this type of pattern has been successful, so it's one to watch for. Um, so again, uh, it's quite an interesting tool. We can we can certainly talk you through more of that when if you come out to the uh, the stand, which is just out the front there. But um, okay, um, you can create price alerts um, now. One of the, the the elements that we're starting to learn a lot about now is that majority of our, well not majority, majority of our trades are still done on the web platform. About 60% of our trade volume is done on the web. But 40% of our trade volume is now done via mobile device. So that is a staggering amount. Considering three years ago, um, the technology, smartphone technology, all of that, you were looking at around about 5%, 10% of our trading. Um, so we've got built-in apps, you've got uh, iPhone, iPad, Android devices uh, that pretty much give you the same types of functionality that you get on the web on a mobile device as well. Okay, um, And we're, just, we're only seeing the numbers increase. Uh, it was 35% last year, it's 40% this year. So majority of traders are now looking to mobile devices uh, to start trading the markets. And it makes sense. It gives you access to price alerts right directly where you are. You're not always attached to your um, your laptop or your PC. You're on the move and you want to be able to take advantage of trading opportunities while you're doing that. So not only do we have push notifications on economic announcements, price alerts, execution alerts. So if one of your trades gets executed, it pushes directly through to your mobile device and tells you that you've had a trade that's executed. 
So if you're not on the platform, you're constantly informed uh, about what your positions are doing at any one time. So um, again, we can show you an example of that when we're back at the platform. But um, again, as David said, uh, the presentation will be online for, uh, for the shares. Um, so if you are interested in just following up on some of the tax efficiencies that we talked about earlier, it's certainly a, a benefit to have a look at these types of products uh, compared to just your physical share trading. They do complement each other well. I've certainly got share portfolio as well, um, but these types of products complement those in a, very, um, in a very good fashion, especially when it comes to short-term hedging. Uh, that's probably the, one of the big advantages. And also, if you are in the, in the tax-free threshold for capital gains, then again, it should be something that you should be looking at. So um, thank you very much, and I'll pass you back to, to David.